Hello, welcome Thursday. Happy Thursday, everybody. I'm Brian Cristiano, CEO and founder of Bold Worldwide. We are a media marketing company based here in New York City. Also opened up shop down in South Florida and working on some other locations as well. And uh, thanks for tuning. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I, I want to use this as an opportunity to be a sounding board, do a QA and a um, about business, marketing, entrepreneurship, whatever you want to know. But before I get into that, what the, what a World Series, man. What, oh my God, unbelievable. That has been one of the best mashups, I, I mean, at least that I can remember. You know, it was one of those things where uh, I'm like, okay, LA, Houston, that's cool, like, good for them. I don't know how interested I am in this World Series, but what a World Series, man. Unbelievable. Like, just those two teams deserve to be there. So incredible. And, you know, a jumping off point from that really is, you know, marketing from a, from a, sports marketing perspective there's so much being left on the table when it comes to sports business sports marketing when you're looking at the world series when you're looking at opportunities of like all right how do we build a brand how do we um you know how do we create awareness for our company and attach it to something that other people care about right sports obviously is massive right i mean we know what's going on in the nfl that's a whole another topic for another day and i was actually on the yahoo uh, podcast talking about that a few weeks ago if you want to go over there and listen to that podcast specifically about the NFL and, and their challenges. Uh, but regardless, let's put that aside for a second. I think the biggest mistake that brands are making is they still just look at, okay, we've got a game. There's X amount of airtime. There's X amount of commercials available. Here's how much we're going to pay, how many hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars we're going to spend to get 30 seconds of exposure in between the innings. Such a mistake. Dude, as soon as the, the play is over, the replay is done, we go to commercial, what are you doing? I know I'm on my phone, I'm on Twitter, I'm tweeting about it, I'm talking about the last play, I'm not sitting there riveted to the screen watching TV commercials. Nobody is, right? But that doesn't mean that there's no value there because people obviously are watching, they're paying attention, they're super passionate. So what brands need to do a better job of is figuring out how do I integrate my brand into the actual program, into the actual event, into the actual sport, Right? Whether that's on air stuff, whether that's an integration, a piece of content, how do I become part of the action and not the thing that's filling the gaps between the action? You know, because because just buying TV spots nowadays, that, that's not cutting it. That's an expensive way to lose a lot of money. Um, but there's still massive opportunity, right? Live events, sports, it's never going away. It's just how, how do we how do we use media as our leverage during sporting events is changing. Um, let me get into a couple of questions here. Thank you guys for uh, for tuning in. Um, shout out from Indianapolis. What's up, John? Thanks so much. The world champions or U.S. champions? Does it matter for the brand? It's world champions, man. It's the World Series, not the U.S. Series. You can debate that later. Um, cool. What questions do you have? All right, I already have one up here up top, but uh, throw me some questions. Business marketing, entrepreneurship, anything that you guys want to know. By the way, by the way, before I jump into this Q&A, hello, Tiffany, thanks for, jo thanks for joining. Um, growing Bold, I know normally every, every week on Tuesday, maybe sometimes we hit Wednesday if we're running a little behind. I know we've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but it's only for the best purposes. You've already seen the teaser, Alex Rodriguez. That's coming up real soon, and uh, you, I, trust me, when you when you see this episode, you're gonna be like, I totally understand why we why we skipped a week and a half. It's gonna be worth every minute, and I really hope you tune in once we do drop that, and I'll obviously keep you up to date. Um, all right, questions about business, marketing, entrepreneurship. All right, let's see. Question: What's your best advice on gaining credibility in a very niche market when you're just starting out, especially when it deals with just getting people paid for their work? Uh, give, give me some context around what that is, right? What, what's the market? You know, what's the niche market? What are you doing? 
deals with getting people paid for their work. What's the work, right? What's the work? What's the niche market? So then I can answer that properly. Troy, what's up, Troy? How do you build systems within your agency? Do you write operating procedures and PDFs? Is it all hands-on all the time with every employee? It's a mixture, you know, we're growing and we're growing very rapidly. And so that's an honest challenge as we're scaling and as we're adding more employees and we're adding new positions and uh, the infrastructure here is changing on a constant. So there's no perfect solution for that. I'm not a big believer in, you know, a PDF is gonna solve problems, right? I've had people here who have, oh, well, here's the 20 page deck on everything that everyone needs to know. You know, people read that their first day, they forget about it. And unless you're jamming it down their throat, they're not going to go back and read it, no matter how great your culture is. So I think it's just being realistic. So while yes, you need to have these things written down, I prefer to have the very top level expectations, like what, regardless of position, are is required of you as a person to be here at Bold Worldwide, right? That's the top, that's the top stuff I want everybody to have drilled into their heads. And then as far as the individual positions, sure, there's checklists, there's there's different, you know, maybe there's a PowerPoint or something like that for a different position that has some very specific uh, deliverables or, or specific executions that that person needs to know. And then I prefer to have someone on whatever team they may be, if it's an accounts person, someone on the accounts team sitting by them as they're getting onboarded, um, but having the paperwork to go back and reference, I think that's the best way to do it because I don't, I don't think just a PDF or PowerPoint solves anyone's problems. JP is in the house. Uh, let's see, John, how do you find the best talent? What's your top grading process to, turn, to determine who to hire? Um, I hire based on culture first. So it, it, it's my assumption that if I'm hiring you for as an art director, that you have experience as an art director and you know how to do that stuff, right? You know who Photoshop is, right? Um, I assume that. I assume you've got the technical skills, right? You, you have to hit that level to get in the door. Okay, now you've got the technical skills. I'm strictly hiring on culture. So meaning, you know, are you scrappy? Are you hungry? Um, are you willing to put in extra effort? wear a couple extra hats, especially as a growing agency that's smaller. Are you, are you gonna throw on a couple extra hats and, and, and pick up the slack and go, hey, I can help with this. Let's figure out how to solve it. Are you a problem solver? Or are you a person that shuts down when things get tough, when things get stressful? Because I can't have the latter, but I want the former. And so for me, it's really about asking the right questions to people that make it in the door and really understand them as a person. Like, what motivates you to get out of bed? Why are you gonna come to this agency and be excited? What's gonna make you not be excited to be here? And so for me, it's really about understanding the person's motivations, what's, you know, what's gonna motivate them, what's not, and then if it fits our culture, great, and they have all the other stuff, great, let's go. Uh, let's see. It's encouraging to hear the challenge for you as well. My biggest current challenge. Thanks for your answer. Yeah, it's a challenge. Right? There's, and there's no perfect solution, Troy. That's the thing. I don't think there's any perfect solution. You're going to have different people will approach that problem differently. So I think for you, it's about understanding what is your culture? What are the most important things to you and to your company? And then figure out, all right, what are the questions I need to ask to figure out if that person fits my culture, or the culture I'm trying to build, right? That's how you do it. That's your story. But I think it's understanding those uh, those dynamics, which are going to get you the best people, regardless of position. Dennis, my man, what's up? <laughs> what's up, Dennis? Uh, Patrick, it's time for Christmas sales now. Any advice on that? Double down. Uh, Patrick, what are you selling? If you're selling uh, something that is uh, direct to consumer, hell yeah, double down. I'd quadruple down, 10x, 20 exit. Uh, tell me what you're selling, though, and I'll give you real advice. John, shout to the Tony Hawk board in the background. Thanks, man right? Uh, love it. Eric, independent contractor or employee? I prefer employees, but we use independent contractors as well. When we were much smaller, when it was just a five person shop, we used a lot. We were much heavier on, uh, you know, on the 1099s, on the, on the contractors, right? On the freelancers, just because that was the reality of scale at that point in time. Now that we're growing, now that we're bigger and we have dozens of employees, um, we're looking to hire people because when you start to get bigger and you have more projects going on and there's a lot bigger uh, clients and more stuff is at stake, it's a lot easier to walk over to somebody and say, hey, let me see this right now than it is to try to coordinate over email and Slack, et cetera. And so I prefer um, full time, but if you're really small, go freelance until you start to get the scale in which you can justify the full time hires. Hopefully that helps. 
Patrick. Uh, okay, gift items. Yeah, man, Patrick. If you're selling gift items, I assume that you're direct e-com or like drop shipping or something like that. Dude, now is the time. Where are we? November 2nd. Okay, you've got like a week to get your shit together um, before you're really going to need to go all in, right? Facebook ads, targeting people looking for gifts, targeting people who like the types of gifts that you sell. Um, really, really hard sales. Um, come up with something creative about, you know, buy one, get one free or, you know, I don't know what it, exactly, like what makes sense for your business model, but something that's going to attract people to say, oh, wow, like I ha a, I have to have this B, this is a deal of a lifetime because it's the holiday shopping season and C, like, you know, shut up and take my money. So we see significant increases in sales for our clients that are selling direct e-com during I'd say the next week and a half all the way through the first end of the first week of December. That's like the peak. Um, and so just throw anything that you can into that, assuming that you're actually converting sales, uh, because typically we see a massive rise in conversion rates during that time period because people want to spend money. And if you have a good product and you're targeting it to the right people, they're going to buy it. Let's see. John, yes, on Amazon second headquarters. I don't know, man. <laughs> where I forget where people are, are are thinking that might be, right? Didn't they just uh, didn't Bezos just come at a couple meetings with a couple cities? Uh, like uh, I know they were talking with Seattle, doing some whole thing, but the infrastructure would be crazy. So where where are they going? I forget. Uh, Brandon, being a self-taught business owner, do you recommend taking online seminars or classes? If what what do you recommend? Yes, a hundred percent, man. I think. At the end of the day, the best investment that you can make is an investment on you, your knowledge, your experience, um, your circle of the people that surround you and other people you're doing business with is the most important thing, right? The more, the, the more that you get, the more that you understand, the more comfortable you feel, the more you're exposed to, the better decisions you're going to make, the faster you can make those decisions, the better outcome those decisions are going to have for you and for your business. So as someone who went to two years of college, year and a half of college left and is kind of figured out the rest through the hard knocks uh, and through <laughs> ups and downs, I would absolutely suggest, I think the most valuable things I've done is investing in different courses, different training, uh, different seminars. And so there's no right answer as to like which one it is for you. I think it just depends on like where you currently are. What are the things that you really need the extra edge on? What I would say is there's two things that you need to make sure is one, look at the, what's the thing that's going to have the biggest impact for you right now that if you knew or you learned or you had a better handle on, you could have a much bigger impact. Go do that stuff first. Uh, before you go and learn some like, oh, I'm going to go learn coding because I want to build a website, but websites aren't really like going to have that big of an impact for you. Forget that. If it's like, hey, you know what? I really need to understand financials better because I need to make sure my margins are tight so that I can hire my next employee and, and that's going to have a big impact for you. Go learn that. And so I would just say or sales, whatever. I think sales training is always a good idea. Uh, because you can never, you can never be sharp enough as far as sales are concerned. Cause at the end of the day, that's a lifeblood of any organization. Uh, what are your key factors? What are your key factors and principles to have an effective marketing it can be either online or offline? Um, it needs to be measurable. I don't want to just throw marketing dollars out into the universe and go like, I hope that worked. Let's find out in a quarter or two, which is how most marketing companies operate. That's how most marketers operate. That's how traditional media operates for the most part. I want it to be measurable. I want to know where's my dollar going? What am I getting back on that dollar? And I also want to understand short-term and long-term value of that dollar because too often people are just assuming, hey, I'm gonna, I need to put a dollar in and get $2 back. That's wonderful. That's called a free ATM. But what I want to know is, hey, if I put a dollar in and I only get 90 cents back today, is that still worth it? Because if it costs me a dollar to get a customer that spends 90 cents today, but that customer's with me for two years and spends $500, was that loss of 10 cents worth it? Oh, hell yeah. So I want to understand both in the short term, what does that look like? And then I want to understand on the long term, what's the lifetime value of a customer? Can I increase the lifetime value of a customer? Can I increase the upsells to a customer? There's a lot of different ways to look at it. So, you, you know, just looking at the initial like a direct ROI, dollar in, dollar out today, tomorrow, 
yeah, while it's a good metric to pay attention to, it's definitely not the only metric that you should know. And it's definitely not the metric that you should make all your decisions on. Because again, there's a lot, you want to play the long game, not just today, tomorrow. That's how you go out of business. Let me scroll up here. Guys, is this helpful? If this is helpful, definitely just, uh, you know, give me the thumbs up so I know I'm, I'm headed in the right direction. This Q&A is good. It's valuable for you. Um, just let me, let me, let me know that. So I'm, uh, I know that I'm on track and that this is helpful for you guys. I'm just going to scroll up here. This is our second time marketing for clients the week before black Friday. What's a good way to explain a new client, the slowdown in sales, especially a client had for less than a month. Just be honest, dude. You're just be honest and say like, dude, are you going out and spending a bunch of money this week? No, I'm not. You're not. Most people aren't. Everyone's saving up their dollars the big wave is coming. So just be honest with them because it's just the truth, right? I think like no one should expect that mar that marketing and sales dollars should always be flat and constant. It's just not true. It's it's always this, it's always a variable, it's always fluctuating. And so just be honest with them. And then if they're like still inquisitive, be like, are you gonna go and spend a bunch of money today on, on this product? Or are you waiting for a week or two when you know you need to get gifts and you know it might be on sale or there might be other opportunities? I mean, it's common, common sense, right? Um, let me just see here. Uh, this is our second. Okay. Let me scroll down here. Do you think the meeting with Grant Cardone will be something that will haunt, motivate you for the rest of your life? Definitely doesn't haunt me at all, man. Grant Cardone is the man. He's a, uh, he's a character, right? Like he's a caricature of himself, especially online, but he's a really nice guy. Like he's, he's, he's an intense dude. But like he's a nice guy he really does want to see everyone around him succeed uh the knowledge that he imparted on me was really awesome the kick in the ass he gave me to get me going to motivate me to get me to step up uh was invaluable and so he's somebody that uh no it doesn't haunt me at all it motivates me i think about it um you know I, all the people over there at cardone um enterprises technologies i don't know he's got so many companies but all the people that work for, for him over there also really smart great people and so and i t t uh, stay in touch with a lot of them so i think that uh for me it's not like whether it haunts me or motivates me it's just like a thing that happened that got me to that next stage that next level and i'm appreciative of it jose what's up jose um what's up ryan do you th what do you think about gifts or giveaways to people interested to get them on your page i don't know man i think giveaways can be kind of cheesy depends obviously it works um depends on who you are i'm not a super big fan of that kind of stuff i think it's cheesy personally um, I'd rather do stuff like this where, where, you know, we get to communicate, you get a little bit of my time. Uh, hopefully I help some of you, or you, at least you learn from some of the other answers and questions that are happening from other business people, marketers, entrepreneurs, it helps you, um, because then you're going to come back. Right. And so for me, that's more valuable, a giveaway something. Yeah, sure. I think it would depend on what it is. And if you can do it in a way that's not cheesy and it's really valuable, I mean, Hey, maybe like a coaching call or a seminar or something like that for free can work. Um, um, I'm not opposed to it, but I would just be careful not letting it get cheesy. Alex, what's up, my man? Uh, hey, Brian, uh, besides luxury brands, can you make more sense selling directly on Amazon instead of uh, opening a new, uh, a brand new e-commerce? <sighs> yes and no. So here's the deal, right? In the short term, absolutely. Just go to freaking Amazon, dude. They got the infrastructure. It's all set. You're ready to go. Um, you know, why reinvent the wheel? They're the best. They're the fastest. They have the infrastructure. It works. It's proven. They've got the biggest marketplace. Like, yeah, be there for sure. Amazon, 100% every day, all day. That's where I want to be. I do think it's important to still have your own e-commerce channel, though, because you're putting all your eggs in one basket if you're just on Amazon, right? That means that at some point in time, if something changes, if Amazon changes their business model, if all of a sudden they want more margin and that hurts your business, you need somewhere to go. Um, Amazon, 100% be there. Also have a, uh, you know, have your own e-com as well. Thumbs up, Troy. Valuable. Thanks, Jim. Jim's in the house. What's up, my man? Uh, Sonny. It means we need to have an average marginal metric year over year basis as per your predictions. Yep. Uh, no problem, Carlos. Catherine, uh, giving Tuesday is coming too. I work for a nonprofit and I'm wondering whether there's a good time to start marketing for that day. 
Uh, Giving Tuesday is when? Is that after um, Cyber Monday or is that before that? I'm not, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but regardless, let me know that. Um, but regardless, Catherine, I would say that, you know, it's never, not never too soon because it can be too soon, but I would say within a two to three week period of time, you need to be promoting towards that, right? You need to give people a reason to check in, to know that it's coming, to know what they're going to get. Uh, be obvious about it. I think people get too cute and too creative. Try to like, Ooh, we're doing this weird thing that we're branding that you can check out on this day. And then when that day comes, people have so many other things that they have going on in their lives. They've forgotten about it or they're distracted with other opportunities. And so the more direct you are about what it means, what it is, why you should be involved, why you should be there, why you should check in, um, gives me a, a reason to, to show up that day and do whatever I need to do. And a great example, simple example is when I remember to actually promote my lives and I talk about it two to three days earlier and then I mention it every day, I get more people on my lives than when I just forget like this morning and I just post it a couple hours ago um, because it doesn't give people time to remember, to prepare, to think about it and go, oh yeah, you know what? I gotta, I gotta jump on this thing. So it's like anything else, just creating that awareness before it happens. All right, guys, I got to get off a little earlier than normal. I got about 10 minutes, um, but I'm going to try to jump through these as fast as I can. Why did you start Bold? Was it because you're interested in marketing? Uh, you didn't like how big brands are doing marketing and thought you could do a better job. If not Bold, uh, what would have started? Um, well, I originally had a production company called 24DP that I started in the early 2000s. Uh, did pretty well. I grew it to a couple million dollars plus in sales. Uh, I had a business partner in 2008, 2009. We saw things very differently. I wanted to go, I wanted to not be a vendor to the big agencies. We worked with a lot of big ones. Um, pretty much you name them, we did work with them. And we did well, but I didn't want to be a vendor anymore, right? Because I saw the marketplace changing. I saw social media changing things. I saw that, yo, we're creating these amazing 30 second broadcast TV spots. And I'm going, but like, why is this taking us six months when the whole trend on, you know, on video, on social, on YouTube, on Twitter has totally changed the marketplace. And so I knew that things were changing. I knew that the big companies were going to be slow to the, to the uptick. And I just wanted to do it different, differently. I wanted to go direct to the client, give them what they needed, not what was just being sold to them. And so I had to buy my business partner out. There's a whole, that, that's a whole another story for another day. And in 2010, I found it bold to be a marketing company uh, where we also brought in the creative and the production arm. Uh, Jason, can you talk retainer versus project-based clients? It's balanced. Depends on what you do, right? I mean, like if you're doing production work, typically it's more project-based. If you're doing ongoing uh, strategy, branding, social media marketing, management, et cetera, it's typically a bit more retainer-based. Um, we do we do a variety of things here. Um, I mean, obviously retainer from a business perspective is a better uh, is a better thing for you because you can anticipate what your cash flow is going to be. You can anticipate the growth of your company, whereas project base is a little bit less clear. And so it's a little more volatile in the short term, but project based work can sometimes have bigger margins. So it's a blend, you know, I think it's about doing both depending on what your services are that you're offering and what you do really well, because if you don't do a really good job of working with a client over a long period of time and building up that client and creating that rapport and helping them with strategy and solving their problems over and over and over improving your worth, then you're not going to be good at charging a retainer, justifying a retainer. But if you are good at that, then you will. So I think it depends on your model, but it's definitely both. David, what's up, my man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hope you are well. Um, let's see. Uh, Melanie, Brian, thank you for sharing your entrepreneurial journey. Helps me with knowledge that this is not as glamorous as it seems. Here's before I answer your question, the only thing glamorous about being an entrepreneur is saying you're an entrepreneur. That's it. <laughs> um, having trouble creating an effective team. What is your advice? Probably you need to look within yourself because a team the way a team works, the way a team operates, the standards that they hold comes down from the top, comes down from the leader. So it's one thing to hire a bunch of really talented people, put them in a room and say, go. But if there's no one leading those people, then eventually you're not going to get the work output that you need. Communication is the most important thing. 
really getting people to understand what your expectations are when they're doing well, right? You got to compliment. You can't just crack the whip all the time. That doesn't work either, but really also letting people know when they're not on the right track. So I would look within yourself and it's either that, you know, you, you're not being clear as a leader or you're not as assertive as you need to be as a leader or, or, or not really painting the long-term picture of like why people are there. Or maybe you're not quite hiring the right people. Maybe they aren't the right fit from the get-go. And that goes back to an answer I had earlier about hiring for culture first to really understand like who are the types of people that you need on your team to help execute that vision. All right, got a couple of questions I can jam in here. Uh, no problem. Uh, do, 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 do. Are you looking for any person learning and develop for a person for learning development? right from India. I'm not looking for that right now, but definitely stay in touch. Thank you. Um, huge motivator. Thanks, Don. I appreciate it. Thanks, David. Jesse, radio advertising is hard to get. Is Facebook advertising enough to market on or do we need other media as well? Here's the thing. Radio, I throw that thing in the trash. Like, who gives a shit? When was the last time you listened to radio in your car and the ads came on and you sat there and listened to and paid attention? Probably freaking never. Um, so I don't like it. I'm not a big fan for any size brand. I mean, but let's get real. If you're Fortune 100 and you're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising, the money's got to go somewhere. You might as well say you're going to saturate Facebook. You're going to saturate all the social channels. You're going to saturate digital. It's got to go somewhere. So that's like the bottom tier. But if you're not a brand that's spending hundreds of millions of dollars, dude, forget radio, forget print, forget all the garbage media that no one's actually paying attention to. That is the has been and put as much of your media into Facebook, Instagram and and content. Right. And I think that that is the most important, most valuable thing, especially for a business that is not a Fortune 100 size. Brian, what is your I will leave it on this. Brian, what's your number one sales tip or strategy? Ask questions. Talk no more than 25 percent of the time. Always be asking questions Let the other person direct you to what they need. Your job in sales is to figure out what the other person's problem or challenge is and then figure out, do I have something that will solve that problem? And if so, I'm going to show you the value of why it's the right solution for your problem. The only way you truly get there in a sale is to ask questions. Well, why are you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? Well, what if what would happen if you did do this? Is that good? Is it bad? What What's most important to you as a company? You know, what, what are, what are your goals for 2018? You know, if you had to choose something that would have the biggest impact now, what would that be? And you ask questions, you ask questions, you ask questions and you figure out what's their problem. And then if you don't solve their problem, Hey, that's cool. We didn't waste too much time. Move on. Don't sell them something that doesn't help them. But if your product or service actually helps the problem that they have, awesome. Now go into the value proposition of your uh, product or service. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you all so much. Uh, if you like this, if it was helpful, share the stream. It's all I ask, right? Just trying to grow the following, grow the base. The more that I'm able to do this, the more of you that interact, the more often, the more frequently I'm going to be able to do it. Stay tuned for Growing Bold episode 13. I don't have an exact date yet, but hopefully very soon. I'll let you know as soon as I do, it is going to be worth it a million percent. The value that's going to be in episode 13 is beyond anything I've given before. So keep an eye out for that. Stay in touch. Ask me questions. I appreciate your time and uh, have a great rest of the week. Go out and make sure to be bold. Yeah.